let me share a story with you. Two weeks ago, I received a message from Naomi. Naomi decided to paint with oils again after more than 10 years. However, when she started, she realized that she didn't have the proper skills to pull ideas from her mind and lay them on the canvas. In her own words, I'm frustrated because I feel like I need to scream but I don't know how. Naomi is aware of what's holding her back. She knows she should be practicing and yet this simple idea feels terrifying to her. Why is it that the thought of practicing form and value petrifies me? She asked. Maybe I'm afraid of facing the gigantic mountain I have to climb before I can truly express myself. Those aren't Naomi's words, but they could have been mine. I've been there at some point. What could I respond to her? The disconnect between the willingness to create and the necessity to build the skills to do so can be petrifying. It's so easy to have ideas. If it was just ideas in our head, everybody would be a freaking genius. And yet, if it was only in our heads, it would be nothing. Well, not really nothing, it would be just potential. But we all know that potential can be wasted. Potential needs to be actualized, otherwise it just vanishes away. And this is exactly what the function of the artist is all about. Taking potential paintings and turning them into actual paintings. Making ideas reality. Why is it so hard? Because it seems that the world is resisting. Reality is ruled by inertia. The brush doesn't want to be picked up. The paint doesn't want to be moved around. It's all a beautiful waste of energy. It's just moving matter around for no apparent reason. Everyone is creative as long as it's only abstract ideas. Resistance is only felt when it's time to give those ideas a physical reality. If so few people are actually creative, it's not for lack of ideas. Most people give up when they realize that the world is always resisting and that translating a mere thought into something real is extremely difficult. Matter just doesn't want to be transformed into something. So what's the point, they say. And the thing is that the greater you will to create will be, the more stubbornly the world will resist you. So yeah, it does take some type of courage to create. But you have this courage in you. I know it because everybody can find this courage. This fear is just a sign that what you've attempted to do is greater than you, yet. But it doesn't always have to be like this. The mountain ahead of you will never become smaller, but you can and you will become bigger as an artist. I know what you're going through, I felt the exact same way at some point. I wanted to express so many things, but the amount of work ahead of me felt overwhelming. I've wasted a lot of time and energy into practice, and I've been through many pushbacks. I've had to pull myself out of many ruts. I've practiced a lot. Some of this practice was useful, and some of this was frankly just a waste of time. I felt discouraged and directionless many times, like being at a crossroad but realizing that you don't really know what your final destination is supposed to be in the first place. And looking back it was all worth it, but it was hard to maintain this courage to create through it all. And several times I considered giving up and maybe Things would have been different if I didn't change my mindset when it comes to skills, frustration and creativity and how to deal with it as a beginner. If I were to start painting all over again, this is what I would do. I wouldn't rush to pick up a brush, but instead I would take a piece of paper and write down five important things. And it can be anything, a napkin, a page in your sketchbook or a document in your computer, whatever. 
the important thing is to keep it for later. Five key ideas to keep for later when it feels hard to create. Number one, final destination. First, I would start by identifying my final destination. What is the type of art that I truly want to make? Where do I want to go with this? Practicing for the sake of practicing is useless if the end goal is not clearly defined. If I just force myself to practice without a clear idea of my end goal, I'll just end up being bored and disappointed. I know that it can be very hard to define the type of art that you want to make in the future when you're just beginning, and it's normal to not have a clear idea at this point. So as a complete beginner, what I would do is just write a list of words that I would like people looking at my future paintings to say, for example, in my case it would be maybe figuration, realistic, imagination, poetic. That's just an example, but I'm sure that you'll find the list that would define the type of art that you want to make. Two technical challenges. Next, I would assess my technical challenges and the kind of techniques that would be needed to get to my final destination. What are the skills that I'll need to make this type of art? Because there are many ways to make art and many skills overall, so I probably don't need to learn every single technique there is to learn. It sounds very interesting to learn every single technique, but maybe it's not necessary. Maybe I don't need to climb this mountain. Maybe I need to learn how to swim across this river in a completely different direction. And you have to figure this out. 3. Break barriers. Next, I would make sure to dismantle the barriers that I lay before myself. Find a strategy to unlock myself and just go for it. Find things that I will be sure to love doing even if I fail. Find exercises that I would do without hesitation. Exercises that are simple enough so that I can start without too much preparation but that are still complicated enough so that they allow me to learn and grow as an artist. And when I was a beginner, for me it was drawing bark plates and painting casts. This type of exercise was really this type of barrier breaking practice for me. Practice that I would still love doing today if I had more time. Just because this is the type of thing that I can do without overthinking and because if I fail I won't feel bad because it's part of the learning process. It's not something designed to be exhibited or shown to anyone. It's just something that I can do for myself. Nobody has to see this and it can help me break my own barriers and overall become more confident as an artist. Four, find strength in my flaws. Four, I would try to make peace with my own flaws and even better, turn them into strength for what would become potentially my future style. I'm too tight, I polish too much and sometimes I focus too much on details. I'm way too perfectionist. I know all of these. The thing is, I can't really fight against this. I don't want to let these flaws take too much space, for sure, but I don't want to lie to myself either and paint with a style that's not mine. So what I would do is list the flaws that I have when I'm painting and work on a strategy to either eliminate them completely or turn them into actual qualities. For example, being tight, as long as it's not too tight, can be an advantage to attract the attention of the viewer where I want it to be. Polishing too much, it can be a problem, but if it's done only for the most important elements of the painting, it can really make them stand out. So this is what you have to work on. Knowing who you are as an artist, knowing what your qualities and what your flaws are, and trying to make your flaws work as qualities. And five, a message to my future self. Finally, I would write down a message to my future self. A message that I could read when I feel discouraged, anxious or disoriented. A message that would help me go through it all. I don't know what your message to yourself will be, but I know that it will help you when, like you said, you feel that you need to scream but you just don't know how. 
in the end, screaming what cannot be said, painting what cannot be seen, it's all a part of what being an artist is all about. It all requires courage, the courage to create. <laughs>